in its simplest form, it's, it's a QR code that you embed on a live streaming code, uh, on any live streaming platform. Um, it doesn't matter what the platform is, Facebook, YouTube, wherever it is, and any visual platform, um, you embed it onto that as an overlay. And all, all that really happens is, is that while you stream, your fans can pay you in real time. And when they pay you, it's a super simple little process. And that, that's really the secret to it is it's dead simplicity. They can also send a message to you. Um, and then you can receive the payment in real time. So you see it coming in with the message and it allows you to sort of thank the person or converse with the person or talk back to the fans in, uh, in real time. Um, and that really is all it is, um, a way to get money really fast. A lot of it, um, and you know, I'm going to talk a lot of the, the ideology behind it is really because in South Africa, the YouTube monetization part of it, and, and YouTube is one of my clients, I work with them a lot, isn't so great down here. And it, it also misses a lot of, of really valuable tricks. So Buske kind of solves that problem um, by allowing the fan to decide how much they want to contribute to you. And there is actually the, the key to, to Busker is that we're finding so many interesting things that in the music space, artists, um, people, fans tend to contribute more than a ticket price, more often than a ticket price. Um, and that is really sort of what's cool about it. Um, that's really all it is in a nutshell. But what I'll talk to you about is, is how it works and and what it's supposed to do. So the, the coolest, uh, well, the, the thing that is, I think has made it very interesting um, is that this whole lockdown thing has done something very interesting um, in the digital space. And yes, everyone is scrambling and trying to figure out what is there. And a lot of the traditional sort of ticketing platforms and all that are trying to figure out what to work, what to do in this space. But Busker has actually um, changed the relationship between fans and the person who's live streaming and that really is the key thing to understand and it's not easy to do you know it's been a process here in south africa and we're, we're literally launching um in the us in the next week i think we are and it's, it's also a process and and you will participate in the process of actually educating your fans that this is a new way to actually uh work with with people and that really has been the, i think the most successful thing about it is now that when people see uh, here anyway, that, that little busker code, they know what it means, they know how to use it, they know what to do. And, and that is really, um, yeah, and that, that's really what has been cool about it. Um, let me quickly go through the, the presentation and then we can do questions and then you guys can sort of see. And I'll bring you up to date with what it is, how to use it and all of that stuff. Does anyone, does anyone have any questions so far? I mean, it's, it's so simple. Um, anyone want to throw out anything? No. Yes, no, 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 maybe no. no. <laughs> okay, cool. So, oh, host is disabled screen sharing. Can I, uh, would I be able to do a screen share quick? Uh, do that. Say again. Let me know when it's possible. Um, I'm going to also just while we're waiting for that, um, and I will address this as well. I, you know, one of the initial concerns, there were two big concerns that some of the more well-known people had around here. And one of them was this idea that they don't want to be seen as looking for a handout. And that is really not the case. And I don't know if anyone has done crowdfunding before. Um, Busco works along the same ideology as crowdfunding. And so, Crowdfunding is something I've done a lot of and I'm constantly surprised by it. Uh, and I raised um, a lot of money to do a feature film just through crowdfunding. And what it taught me was a lot of, um, it seems anti-corporate, like unless you've done crowdfunding, a lot of it doesn't make sense. Um, why would someone give you something for nothing? And the answer is because y the fan at home who has a kind of shitty J job and just like waiting to get to the sport on the weekend or whatever, they want to feel included in projects like this. And for, um, for people that they really admire to allow them to participate in a project um, is a really big deal. And that's why crowdfunding works so well. And Busker kind of works on that same sort of train is that you're rewarding people. Um, 
you're rewarding your fans for, for participating in your project. Um, yeah. Let me have a look. Are we, uh, are we struggling with the thing? Shall I just talk rather than... Or two minutes. Okay. All right. Okay. Probably just keep talking through it, John, as well. So sure. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to check here. All right. So I just wanted to show you in action uh, some of the things that, of how it works. But uh, let me go right to the end to uh, the, psych the, the how to do it well, just to get, put everyone's mind at ease stuff. Okay, so the first thing about the psychology of it is that your responses are in real time. So one of the biggest tricks to doing crowdfunding is that you never ask for money. You're always thanking people. And one of the, when we first started in the early days of crowdfunding, I noticed that every time we asked someone, please, can you contribute to the thing I'm doing? We very rarely got a contribution. But whenever I said, thanks, Darren, for your amazing contribution, we got three contributions very quickly after that. So we started to build strategies around focusing on gratitude and always be uh, talking to the fans in a way that's fun and frivolous, never asking for money, but always engaging with people that are contributing. And that really, uh, sometimes 60 to 70% of your contributions just come from that engagement. And that's why Busker has, uh, we built a live dashboard so that while you are streaming, you can actually interact live with these sorts of, um, with the contributions as they're coming out. Um, the second most important thing is creating moments. And one of the beautiful but crazy and hard to digest parts of using Busker, the Busker codes are that in a way you're getting real time analytics of what works and what doesn't work. Um, so in South Africa, for example, all the top comedians have been using Busker and it's quite stressful for them because the, co the comedy industry has been hurting really badly because comedy is a very hard thing to do in, in an environment where there isn't people. So these guys are like freaking out because they do jokes, but they don't really get in a response. So they're literally doing it in a vacuum. But with Busker, um, people contribute. The, it, it's a, it's a heart. Um, it's it's a in the moment heart um, payment. So you only pay when you want to, what you want to. And when you're watching someone or enjoying a performance of something, or when someone is streaming. At the moment that something magical happens is when you start getting your contributions. And so what it happens is it starts changing how you do your live stream, how you do your show. You start looking for those moments or creating those moments that, that get more contributions. And so even with, um, in, the, in the comedy world, what's happening is like people are writing their uh, sets and stuff and then looking back at the contributions to see where the set was working and not working and then re-evolving their sets going forward to sort of focus on those moments that really engage with people and that's why I say um, what we found is it's so different from a ticketing system ticketing is you get your money up front it's a payment this is not a payment this is when you feel that you want to support this guy when you feel that this the value is there that's when you pay and often in the moment, because it's an emotional purchase, you pay more than you would a ticket or something else. Um, and so that's the, really the, the science of figuring out. And we've got loads of guys. What's lucky about us, we have all the data from all, the, all of the um, thousands of people who are using it. And a lot of these guys are figuring out the science between, oh, this is how you can uh, get more contributions. I've just got a little thing that says I can share the screen now. Yippee. Ooh, desktop. Cool. Let me move this out of the way. Everybody's still there. Anyone still there? Yep. That's probably a yeah. No, question. I'm here. Um, I'm just <laughs> keeping my my mic muted because I have yeah, a dog in the background. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Sure can. Yep. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna just race through it so because uh, I think the the questions is where I really want to get to. So what is it? It's the first it's world's first live donation solution that works on nearly every platform doesn't matter where you are even in the real world um if you can see this code you can use it and it doesn't require any app you pick your phone up you point at it and off it goes um this is a little ad that we've americanized just so that you guys can see in real time very quickly you can't see this can you the person the menu of people let me just move that out of the way uh i was going to quickly right. play this for, for you sorry can you see it no you can't okay cool 
Uh, this is a very quick little ad. Just shows you in the quickest possible way what what it is. And again, targeted mainly at the music and comedy and entertainment space for now. And we'll get onto the sports part of it now. donation solution for artists to earn while they live stream. Okay, what does that mean? It means that you can perform on any of your own platforms. Your fans can give you money in real time while you play. Okay, cool. Also, they send you messages with their contributions. Hi, Sam. Cool gig. Here's $20. All right, that's cool. So, how does it work? I just told you. No, I mean, how does it work? Pick up your phone, put it in camera mode, scan the code, choose your payment option. Done. Okay, I want to get one. Sorry, you can't. You're not real. You're me in a wig. But the rest of you can. <laughs> um so that's just what that's how it works very simply um again it's about appreciation um it's not the same as a ticket it's not the same as a um somebody giving you a handout it's a very different relationship um it's working across all the social media what's nice about it is when you do um you know when you do um what do you call it uh, it's the french word it's that one platform when you do um the monthly contributions or um for ticketing platform stuff patreon patreon thank you couldn't remember the word <laughs> appreciate that when you do those sorts of things it's a consistent stream of income and it's quite a hard sell to get into that point whereas this works the be it, it works very well because you're on your social media platform that has the most followers so if you have 20,000 followers on Facebook, this is where you're doing your streaming. All 20,000 people um, are able to watch your live stream. And of those 20,000, a percentage of them will start contributing to you. Whereas if it's a ticketed platform or a Patreon thing, it's a very limited of people. You have to sell them to get into the gate. And that's why this has been proving as, as much stronger in the digital space than the ticketing systems. Um, it's very quick to sign up. It's super easy to pay. Um, to pay in and it's super easy to get paid out and that's really the whole thing about this thing to make it super simple for everyone uh, In South Africa and actually around the world now uh, some of the biggest artists in the world are using it um, And the way it works from your side is you just get paid out every Friday like a real job um, So all the money comes in and it just comes out on Fridays gets paid out uh, We charge 5% as an admin fee uh, the rest, the other 95, all goes to you guys. Um, we are now uh, in America. We are on Stripe, PayPal, Venmo, Visa. So we, as many payment platforms, we also now have Google Pay, um, Apple Pay, and one or two others that I've got to remember. But basically to make it as simple as possible and as many easy payment platforms as possible for your artists to pay in. The other thing about it is... Um, is that people can pay in from anywhere in the world. And that's been quite an interesting thing is that a lot of, particularly when you're streaming online, your fans can be global. And Busker is a global platform. We've got it running all over the world. So people can pay you from different currencies all over the world. Um, how to embed your code into your stream. This is a whole, it's very simple. It depends on the platform you're using. There's multiple methods of doing it. But when you get your code, you get a whole lot of tutorials and you decide whether you want to be on Instagram, Facebook, wherever, wherever it is. And you get these sort of custom uh, explanations of how to do it. And if you need help with it, we can do it for you. Um, and we're actually busy building a new uh, backend to Busker where you can actually stream through Busker and your code just sort of pops up on there. Um, this is just some of the things we'll go through as well. There's also two. Uh, codes you can get and we've also added this onto the sports hosts custom codes as well um, <clears throat> And they're actually different colors um, You get a black and white one, which is the one that you'll use for yourself and you can also apply for a, um, a Charity code and we see in this time a lot of our business is coming through big charities raising money for COVID related things or for communities so you get a purple one with a hard on um, and it's, it raises money directly for charities, if you want to use that one. And it's physically, it looks different to show the audience. Um, it does the same thing, to so show the audience that it is um, a different purpose. So a lot of guys are sort of combining them up, doing one or two of their own ones, and then doing a big end of month charity fundraiser, keeps money flowing in, keeps people understanding how to use it. Um, what we're doing on our side is just dead simplicity. The, the whole focus of Busker is to be as simple as possible, easy to pay in, easy to pay out, totally transparent. 
you get a live dashboard, you see the money coming in, you see uh, the 5% of our percentage coming out, you, you get paid directly. So there's just no sort of hidden anything. Um, always be adding value. That's, that's a big thing we'll see is as we're going on this year, we're adding new functionality to Busker to make it even cooler. Um, soon, very soon, you'll be able to do, run your own merch shop through Busker. So when someone scans your Busker code, yes, they can give you a contribution, but they could also buy a custom t-shirt just from a specific game that just got played. So it's custom merch or uh, something with your name on or all sorts of other things. So that's all going to be functional very soon inside your code. And I can't read this because my face is in the way. Oh, and I've just spoken about global payments. Um, this is just to show you a little bit of it in action. I just kind of scrolled through our Instagram feed just so you can see in the sports, in the music space, how it's being used. Guys are sort of using it to raise money for other artists or... So you can see the purple code is, is the fundraiser code. Um, I thought I'd do this for you, Darren, the guy from Powderfinger. Uh, for the rest of you, one of the big Australian superstars. Certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's some comedians using it as well. Like you can see a... Um, yeah, there's lots of different ways to use it. There's speakers now, there's, there's book launches and all sorts of things. Um, this is the biggest artist on the African continent over, where is he? Over here. Anyway, I think you get the idea. It's just, it's simple that way. Um, so finally over to this. So we, we've created this custom sports host code. Uh, that's going to be focused on the sports industry for you guys to to be utilizing. You can register it through Sports Hosts, um, and it should be operational by next week, sort of Monday. Um, very simple. If you want one, you set up your account through the Sports Host website. You embed the stream, and off you go. And you can start making money the same second that you start streaming. Uh, this is what the sign up looks like, and I'm just taking you quickly onto it so that you know what you're looking at. Um, you see over here, well, it's going to be automated for America. We just haven't done that yet. On the top here, you see there's a difference between fan contributions and charity fundraising. That's for you to decide whether you want the purple one uh, or both, or you want the fan contributions. I'm assuming a lot of you guys, or most of you will be focused now for fan contributions. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much what there, and it's a very simple registration form. It's one page and it's done. Um, and you move on. Then this is the new uh, uh, where are we now? This is the new wallet that's coming out now. So this is if you're paying into it. It's nice to just, to see how this works as well. Um, you have a, your own picture, a custom picture there. You'll have your uh, it'll say sports host code there. Your person puts in the dollar. They can there's the, where they put in your message. They can decide to be anonymous or share their identity, and then they choose the payment options and it's done. And, and they've paid. And after they've paid, it goes back to your stream. It can take like 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, and then they're, they're back into your stream. And that really is the simplicity of that. Uh, this is what the live dashboard looks like. So if you're on the dashboard, you'll see um, like as money comes in in real time, the name of the person, the shout out that they can send to you, the currency, the country that they're sending the money from, um, and this is nice. You have this up in the background while you're live streaming so that you can say, oh, how, thanks, Antonetta from South Australia for the $100. That's really cool. Um, yep, I'm just powering through now. I'm right at the end, which is awesome. So then just these are the things. Uh, there's a lot more. This thing I could speak about for the whole hour because um, this is really the science of what makes Busker really interesting. Um, the first thing to think about is the real-time responses and how you can utilize them. So this is the, ta the tool. Earlier on, I was speaking about contributions and, and how when you thank someone, you get more contributions. These real-time responses are key to that, that as they're coming in, you are very happy, you know, you're, you're, you're engaging with them. And again, this is why this is a new relationship with an audience. It's not like a like or a comment. You're creating a relationship with the people who are actually putting money into your bank account. Um, the creating moments I spoke about briefly. This is a really important thing is understanding 
when and how people are contributing to your shows. When things aren't working, you have to pivot. You know, this is a whole new um, sort of space. So it's not always easy for everyone right up front. But what we're seeing is as artists use it more and the audience gets more comfortable understanding it, you can really make a lot of money doing this. The focus is on gratitude, never for asking for money unless you're setting a goal. So the other very good fundraising uh, trick through this is to actually have a purpose for the fundraising. And it could be to go on holiday, to buy some new gear, to create a project, to bring someone to you, to help someone. When you have a goal in mind, it really helps you raise a lot more money much quicker. So if you're trying to raise $10,000 and you're clear about that and you say, I'm on $5,000, that's when you start really driving more contributions. Number five is be consistent. This is obviously the live streaming golden rule and the content creation golden rule. rule. But um, people get comfortable. We, um, when they get comfortable to this, we're seeing so many people coming back, the same people giving money back into the same people all the time. And that has been really cool to see. I mean, the trends we're seeing in the, the contributions is kind of um, uh, weird like they don't make a lot of sense except that people really want to, to contribute. And, and that really is an important part. Learn from the analytics, be clear about the process. So one of the best ways to uh, raise money quickly and soon without having to ask for money is to explain to your audience how the process works. How does the busker code work? Because while, while you're educating them, they're sort of going through the motions of trying it and testing it and putting money into your account. And that that's, a good way to get started on that. And the most important thing is to have fun. And that is, you know, the same for all the content that you're doing, but particularly when you're raising money, that you're not, your purpose is not raising money, that the busker code, the thing about the busker code is it's always in your face. It's sitting right there on the screen. I'm just going to stop sharing for a second. You know, it's sitting there. Um, you know, you can make it small there. So it's a, it's a permanent reminder. It's not like a ticket when you buy the ticket you're in. It's a permanent reminder that the person who is streaming is doing it for money and that's telling them all the time. So it's impossible for them to forget. Um, and, and that's really what co- constantly drives. It's much better than putting bank details in the, um, I mean, it's the opposite actually of putting your bank details in your description and saying, please help me or tip jar. It, it isn't any of those things. It's busker and we try to refer it always, well, in that sense as busker, to keep perpetuating that. But in this case, it's going to be sports host. And we want people to see that sports host code and they know immediately what, why it's there, what it's there for, how to use it. Um, and, and that's pretty much the, the story of Busker. Right. Uh, Darren, is there anything I might have missed out? No, no, I've got, I've got a few questions, but I think we open it up to the others first. Um, sure. I, I think that, that'd be the way to go. Um, skeptics? <laughs> I'm not skeptic. I, I like the idea. Um, one question would be, is there a live stream or an example that I can see other than maybe it is your Instagram account where I can see this being done often yeah. just to get an idea of what they do? Because personally, I don't live stream. That's something that I do want to do moving forward. Um, so just, you know, that, that I guess that's my question. Yeah. Okay. So I'll answer that twofold there are quite a few people using it not for live streaming for uh produced videos uh it is my opinion it doesn't it's not as effective but it definitely still works Uh, and not for everyone some of the guys are figuring out how to use it for pre-produced videos and it is working really well for for some of them for a lot of them it isn't because it is that live thing right but if you're very clear in the video that you're making about what you're doing and how you what you're trying to raise and you you sort of um, explain why that busker code is there and that video gets a lot of views. It, it is still working for people. The answer to your second question is, um, yes, there are thousands of buskers going on every day and I don't really know how to keep track of them. So I can send you some links um, of the ones that I do see. Yeah. Um, but it, it's sort of... Um, we don't control them at all. The, the people get their own busker. You keep a busker for life. And sorry, let me just turn my phone off. Um, you keep your busker for life and you stream when you want. It has nothing to do with me or the business or busker. It, it's always live. It always works. Cool. 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 Uh, and we'll get those, we'll get some of those examples and put them in teamwork for you guys. Um, 
the the Chad, if you're there, I'd, I'd ask you to think about like torture cast. Ask a question: How would it really work for torture cast? Given that a lot of people are going to be, and like most of you listening to your content as podcasts when they're not live. Right. Yeah, and I know that. Um, sorry, I didn't catch his name, but he asked a relevant question that I had on my mind because we do. Uh, you know, 99% of our content is a podcast and we have live streamed a few here and there and we certainly have the technology and the capability to do it. Um, we just don't do it very often. We did one about three months ago. We're going to have our season preview in two weeks with some guest hosts and we were going to mm -hmm. live stream that. But it definitely is not a regular thing. Our regular recording is just me and Eric sitting down every week and wrapping up the week of Giants baseball. It's not streaming live. There's no live audio. We just, you know, I package it up, edit it up, and then pop it into the RSS feed and people get it wherever they get it. Um, so this code would be great, obviously, on the Sports Host app if we can encourage people to go there. Uh, certainly um, Instagram, which we just kind of were starting that up. We're pr primarily Twitter and Facebook kind of social media uh, people because we're older. And, uh, <laughs> and we know, you know, obviously there's the capability of embedding, embedding the code on those platforms. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, without regularly live streaming, and I know you just said with some pre-produced films, people have seen success, but others haven't. So I think it would, we would just have to wait and see what kind of response we would get if we didn't convert to more live streaming. Well, all I would say to that is, um, just a couple of the examples that, that I've seen working here is that if the live streaming option works for Busker for you, it becomes a whole new income stream for you, which should, should motivate for, the, for more of those live streams. Oh, for sure. No, I, I, yeah. I agree with that. I think I would have to definitely, you know, speak with my co-host Eric in terms of, you know, maybe try and experiment. We typically regularly record every week at, you know, 11 a.m., 12 p.m. local time on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And so I think with a live stream, I would assume, because I, I, for example, I watch a lot of my friends and other people I follow on Twitch, right? When they're streaming uh, their gaming session or whatever. And so, and, you know, obviously not a busker code, but people are contributing live during their Twitch stream. And so during the stream, they're often going, hey, thanks for the whatever, five bucks. And there'll be a little graphic that pops up on their stream and does a little, you know, some sort of GIF or meme or something like that. That stuff's really, really cool. We've just never mm. pursued that because we're not streaming for three hours you know, while we game. Because I know a lot of people come in and out uh, of streams like that. We typically record for about an hour, I would presume, and I just don't have the analytics to even comment on it. We have such a niche uh, uh, podcast in terms of it's, we really just talk about the Giants. So that's kind of the market we're going for, not all of baseball. Um, so I, I just, you know, the times we've streamed in the past, you know, we get, we get about anywhere between two and 8,000 downloads per episode for our podcast, but mm. for live streaming, it's hit or miss. Sometimes we've had 10, 15 people at the most. So I think it would have to be something we built up with regularity. Mm. So people would say, oh, it's, a, it's 12 p.m. on Wednesday, time to tune in kind of thing. So, so my, uh, first of all, the Twitch model is exactly what inspired Busker. Um, it, it, what they're doing there, what is working on, on Twitch is so cool, but the platform is not for everyone. So we sort of took the best parts of Twitch and made it mobile so that it could work on everyone's platform. But it might be worth investigating the idea of an extension of your podcast that is a live feed, um, you know, um, that, that you could experiment with that for, because that is one of the learnings from Twitch is sort of the longer you're, if, if you're trying to raise a certain amount of money, and I've seen this work a lot on Twitch, not only with gamers, but with artists and people outside of gaming that are also using Twitch, that they want to raise $10,000 for something and they sit online chatting, doing their thing until they raise that money. Um, so it doesn't fit into the sort of idea that you, that you take the podcast recording and do the live stream and it becomes a podcast. It might be an extension of your podcast. It might be a different, a different avenue, a different thing you could, you could experiment with there. And that was probably one of my questions with the, the extension of using um, the community on sports hosts, their groups, their Facebook, their Instagram. If you were raising money, say you, it's, it's for equipment, it's 5,000 for, for equipment, the next step, which a few of our guys have got. Um, 
is it something that, yeah, you can be doing your live stream, it's mentioned, you know, it, in the podcast, and then it's driving to your community, um, where your community's live, say, in the, the, your Facebook page, uh, sorry, Facebook, your, your sports host page. Is that mixing sort of the, your channels, is that, have you seen that work before? It does. So what comes with your busker code, the actual visual code, is a, is a, a backup link, we call it. It's a clickable link that takes people into your busker wallet. And what, I mean, they've, I've just done it. Uh, we didn't do it, but I've just seen some, one of our guys do this. They did uh, a concert on Facebook, but then they sort of broke that concert into little pieces. They spread it across all the media, audio as well, and they sent that little code everywhere. And all it does was exponentially um, raise more money for the core thing that they were doing, which was the concert in all the different media platforms, all across different uh, different environments. And I saw them do go from, uh, I think, like seventeen thousand dollars to about twenty twenty eight thousand dollars by just, and that was after the live feed was over. So that was something that is again completely uh, was their idea, and and I saw it working that way. Any other questions from people? I, I got a question. Um, I, I think he just almost answered it. Um, if you live streaming and the uh, QR code is on, for the most part, my understanding is QR code, um, you got to use the app or use your camera to scan it. If they're watching you live on your phone, how do they access the actual QR code? Or is it the, the, the backup link that you was just talking about? So that's my most common question, and, and the answer is yes. So uh, we don't, there's no app, and that, that is by design. It takes any smartphone camera uh, to use it. But if, you, if it is Instagram, for example, you can't actually uh, scan it unless you scan it with another phone. So there's two things there. The, back, the clickable backup link goes into every single live stream. So it's always in the descriptor. It's always present in case someone has a problem. You never know what the problem could be. Their phone might not be working properly so you always have that clickable link um even though it seems redundant the the idea that even if you can't click that busker code because it's on instagram the fact that it is on the screen during your entire live stream has a, a very big high impact on the rate of of contributions as opposed to it not being there and just having the clickable link it's basically a perpetual advert for that the person who is streaming is doing it for money and you haven't paid yet um, so that's why it's always having that sports host code up there is really important, even if you can't um, scan it with your camera. Okay. Anyone else? I'll jump in. I've got I've got a, a, a another question for you, John. What's the best way for people to to launch it? You talked about before the process. Is a, just talking about the process as an education and how you start people. But just, just, I think, start again. What's the best way for people to start? The and best way for people to start is to just start um, yeah. and not to draw too much attention to it. I, I think the idea of explaining how it works is really important, but leaving it at that. What, um, when I look at, uh, when our team went and looked at all of the, like first time um, guys using the code for the first time. It was those guys who sort of just had it up and people figured out how to use it um, and that it worked the best immediately for. It was the people who tried very hard to kind of get people into the busker headspace. They failed at it. And that's why the, it's sort of time. Um, and we've seen it. We've only been doing it here for, what, four months since lockdown started. But the cultural shift that's come with with that code is, is massive, um, that people now understand exactly how, how you use it, where you use it, what it's there for. They just know it immediately. They know how to engage with it. And that just comes with time. And this is a, for the US market, we're still right at the beginning. So you guys are gonna be pioneering with this thing. And the best thing to do is just to do it and try it. And when it, find out the things that work for you and change, you know, and pivot into those sorts of things until you have a bit of a roadmap of, of what it is of, or how it works for your particular, particular thing. Um, Dad, yeah, Chris, not to make too much of a fuss. So it's so simple. When people scan it, they see immediately they're in your wallet. They see it's all right there. Um, 
it's it's that simple. Sorry, what was that, Darren? I was just going to say, Doug and Chris, you must have a question, I'm sure. I mean, I, I think it was pretty much answered regarding the fact that a lot of people, it sounds like, don't stream at the moment or haven't really incorporated. So basically having that QR code embedded into the post-production of the pod, uh, especially if those are video, um, which a lot of us are doing down the line, not just audio. So I think that part was pretty much clear. I mean, I would just say this is new territory for everyone. Um, and we are not innovating with Busker. I'm just reporting on how other people are innovating. I'm not, an, you know, I, I've been, uh, ex, you know, I have a lot of experience live streaming and all different things from many different genres. Sport is not my period of expertise. But you guys, if it's something you want to do, you'll, you will be the innovators with this and you'll find out how it works best for you and where to put it and where to not put it. And I'll just learn from you. <laughs> and speaking about those, those innovative moments, I think w when you had the seven or so points up on the PowerPoint of, of um, how to use it the best, where there was number two or three was creative moments. And can you just touch on that? I, I didn't um, fully understand what you meant by sure. creative moments. Okay, so this is an interesting point, And that is, again, to reiterate the fact that this is an emotional purchase. And I, I don't know how else to say this without um, sort of the more vulnerable and sort of on point you are in your whatever your project you're doing, the more money you're able to raise. So, you know, in the early days when it was started off with just musicians, we noticed that when um, their favorite artist was singing the chorus of their, the song that everyone loves, at that moment where he hits that chorus, suddenly the money just was rolling in for those sorts of moments. So we started to look for other patterns. With comedians, it would be creating like uh, a build up to a particular moment, but we also saw it was when people made a mistake or did something vulnerable. When you make an emotional connection, which is what is, um, you all do in a, in a live space, when you make an emotional connection in the digital environment, it's very hard for the person on the receiving end to sort of let you know that they are connecting with you. And so the busker code allows them to do that. So that's what, um, uh, there's, there's some performers here, a very well-known guy called Rob von Furen, who's sort of jack of all trades, a, a, a talk show host, a comedian, a performer, all these sorts of things. And what he really did was took Busker every single day into different environments and tried different things out and uh, raised lots of money on that thing and raised no money on that thing. It's the guys who sort of come and do business as usual on their live stream and don't really um, add value to the stream like you would on any content piece um, that didn't do well. But it was those who found special moments. It, it could be an engagement moment. So it could be something where you gamify something with the audience. And it's in those moments that we see contributions rolling in. So when you are doing a live broadcast or uh, even, let's say, a pre-produced video, you should track when you get your contributions then go to the time in your stream where those contributions came in and see what you were doing at that particular time. And then start uh, repeating or trying variations of that to see if whether that was luck or if that was actually something by design. And you start creating a map of magic moments to understand what it is that specifically um, results in contributions from your fans. That's them telling you they really liked it when you did this. That's, that's a really powerful point. The, um... Um, now, is there any other questions for, from everyone? The, uh, there are oh, stupid questions, remember? And other people are going to, lots of people are going to be watching this. This is recorded. Um, yeah, so I have a question. Yeah. Um, is it possible, especially since um, it, when I do start live streaming, I'll have a co-host with me all the time and we're part of the show, Jordan and I, that when someone does scan the code that it gets sent to, that money gets split up into two different PayPal accounts or is it just one? Um, this is a complicated one. A, a single uh, sports host code goes to a single account. So you'd have to account for that yourself. If you wanted to do that, uh, we've had this request a few times of having a drop down menu um, where you go into the busker code and once you're in it, you choose which of the people you, um, you want. 
um, we, we can do a custom one for you, but it still goes to a single bank account. The accounting's still kind of on your side, uh, but we can give you a breakdown. So what you would get is you'd get a breakdown that told you which money was supposed to go to the other person and then you would have to pay them. So it's a bit of a, the, the, the cleverest way to do it that is that if it goes into a business account. So if your podcast had a business name, it would go into there. Uh, but to split a single payment into different accounts is currently uh, not, not, we're not capable of doing that just yet. Got it. Okay. So, so we've had a request from uh, festivals and record labels who want to represent multiple artists. And it is something we have experimented with, but it's actually uh, not fun for anyone. <laughs> it makes everyone's accounting really uh, tricky. And one thing we pride ourselves on is being super transparent about every single penny. And it makes those sorts of things confusing. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Mm. All right. Is, is that it? Is everyone no more questions? Cool. All right. The, I, I just wanted to finish up. Um, Anybody else? Uh, we... Yep. Nope. Okay. All right. I just wanted to finish up by saying some of the main points I really took out of it. Um, John, the presentation was, it's about thanking people. It's not about asking. I think that was one of the most powerful points that came across to me. Um, and also that really the don't ask was came to the point, just to explain how it's used um, and, and let it take off from there and let it grow its own life. And I think that around the content and learning about those magic moments is, is training, you know, us as content providers. I think that that are really, really strong points. Um, one other question, last one I did have, actually, I just realized I haven't asked, was the data sharing. Is there, you know, with what you're learning and, and what your tips and tricks about what's happening in the market, do you do updates or, you know, are there other webinars? And Okay, great question. So the first thing is we do have, I forgot to mention earlier, that we have uh, live customer support for everyone as well, which is uh, we, we very hands-on with all of the guys um, with, in our community about helping them with stuff, answering questions, and particularly pretty much on a case-by-case -case basis, Darren, we help guys who have questions. Uh, we have a really nice team, um, and that's where we're getting a lot of positive feedback about being hands-on, about giving people insights and uh, allowing them to do, like understand what they're doing and give them those sorts of insights. Everyone's needs are kind of different. So we do use our Instagram page to sort of put the basic things on. But a lot of the team is about actually focusing on people's specific streams and figuring out with them how to make them better um, and sharing insights from other people who are doing something similar. This one is, um, is new for us because it's sports. But I definitely think maybe a blog around sports, maybe we should start uh, a little sports host blog specifically internal just for this community so that we can all share our learnings with each other so that everyone can learn from this community. I think that would be really powerful. What we'll do, John, is we already have a group called Teamwork. Um, right. It's only content creators. I'll invite you to that and we'll create a topic around this and people can specifically ask questions and we can share it with the community um, ongoing. And I thought that's really the innovation here. If we if we just get going with it and people test it, I think if they're sharing between each other, you'll educate each other as, as, as we go around what's mm. working and what's the innovation. So I think that group will be great. I'll invite you to that. And I think that's probably the best way to, to take it from here. Great. All right. And, yeah, that's it. And just have fun with it. That, I, that's what the last thing I wanted to just say is that um, I didn't foresee this happening is that, um, uh, like artists are still doing ticketing events. They're still doing all of the things that they ordinarily do, but they're using uh, the, the busker code as a, as a income stream, as a specific income stream um, because the tone of it is different and it kind of works differently. They now have their live gigs, their online streams and all that stuff. Plus they have their busker streams uh, because they've seen that as being actually a viable income stream as we go forward. So that's why it's worth experimenting with it and not necessarily uh, trying to squash it into what you are doing, but experimenting as an extension of what you are doing. I think that's, and then it that's becomes its own animal. I, I think that is a fantastic point. And I want to thank you, everyone. John has been just finished a 15-hour uh, car drive. It is now 2 o'clock in the morning or near enough. 
um, and it's been filming for three days. So uh, thank you, John, for taking the time out and doing this. Uh, it is really appreciated. And uh, we'll, we look forward to chatting to you on teamwork and, and seeing how we innovate it as, as a group. It's lovely to meet you all and really an honor to be doing this. And we're very proud of our new little sports host code, which I think is going to change the world. Excellent. So are we. Thank you. Thanks. Cool, guys. Good luck out there. Thank you. Stay safe. All right. Thanks.